Hello and good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Alicia Cosma, and I am the director of Indiana University Cinema. Thanks for coming to this screening of our Art in a Movie series. Before we begin, it's critical to acknowledge that IU Cinema is built and operates on the unceded ancestral lands of the Mayamake, Lenape, Potawatomi, and San Wawa peoples. And we offer this land acknowledgement in their honor. This introduction and the following Q&A after our film will feature live captioning. To turn captions on, simply move your mouse to the toolbar at the bottom of your screen, click on the live transcript button, click on the show subtitle option. If you have any issues, please feel free to ask a question using the Q&A box, which you can reach by clicking on the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. To introduce the film this evening, we are joined by Nan Brewer, curator at the Sydney and Lois Eskenaze Museum of Art and a curator of our art and a movie series at IU Cinema. Nan. Thank you, Dr. Kuzma. This evening's presentation is a little different for the art and a movie series. The program begins with a six minute art film, When We Gather, that could also be shown in a gallery setting. Conceived by the Cuban American artist, Maria Magdalena Campos Pons, it was inspired by the inauguration of the US's first woman and first woman of color as vice president. The film offers a poetic celebration of the elemental role that women played in the progress of this country and a kind of spiritual cleansing. It will be followed by a short documentary, When We Gather Together, that traces the process of creating the complex collaborative work with seven women artists from around the country during a global pandemic. The Art in a Movie series is itself a collaboration. And I'd like to thank the IU Cinema staff for de dealing with the logistics and our series sponsors, Marsha Bradford and Harold Dumas for making the screenings and Compost Pond's virtual visit possible. I'd like to also like to thank gallerist Wendy Norris for bringing these videos to my attention. And one of the film's producer, producers, Andrea Yi Chu Chung for her assistance. I am also grateful to Abagunda from IU's department of African American and African Diaspora Studies for her moving piece on the films for the IU Cinema's blog. I first became aware of Compost Pond's work through a large etching in the Eskenazi Museum of Arts collection, Are Those Pearls or Tears, My Beloved One? It features a young girl standing on a deserted beach looking out towards the sea. The bottom three fourths of the composition features long tendrils of vegetation streaming from a pack on the girl's back. Mixed among the leaves is a bell with small footprints. There is a sense of loss and longing. She is tethered to memories of her past and full of hope for the future. Compost Ponds has always been interested in issues of history, memory, religion, and identity, particularly in conjunction with the role of women. Compost Ponds herself has a multicultural background. She was born on a Cuban sugar plantation and is of Nigerian, Chinese, and Hispanic lineage. Her work, including photography, painting, sculpture, performance, installation, and video art, often includes the iconography of the sea, both in reference to her family's history of slavery and her own migration to the United States. Compost Pond studied at the National School of Art and a higher institute of art in Havana, and then did an MFA at the Massachusetts College of Art in Boston. She returned to Havana to teach and became a leading member of the new Cuban art movement, a group opposed to the island's repressive communist regime. In 1991, she immigrated to the United States and took a teaching position at the School of the Museum of Fine Art at Tufts University. In 2017, she became the Cornelius Vanderbilt Endowed Chair 
of Fine Arts at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. Compost Ponds has exhibited widely and has had solo shows at the Museum of Fine Arts in New York, Indianapolis Museum of Art, and National Gallery of Canada. She also founded and co-founded several nonprofit organizations. Compost Ponds will be led in the discussion following the films by Anka Birkenmeyer. Birkenmeyer is a professor in IU's Department of Spanish and Portuguese, Interim Director of Graduate Studies in the Hispanic Literature Program, and a former director of the Center for Latin American and Caribbean Studies. She did her graduate work at the University of Tübingen in Germany and Yale University, where she received her PhD. Her publications include monographs on the writer Alaho Carpentier and the Spectrum of Races, Latin American Anthropology and Literature Between the Wars. She also edited and co-edited Havana Beyond the Ruins, Cultural Mappings After 1989, and Caribbean Migrations, The Legacies of Colonialism. I thank Magda and Anka in advance for their participation and hope that you enjoy tonight's program. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction, Nan. Now, on to the show. The film will not screen through this Zoom webinar. Rather, you'll see the link to the film appear on your screen. It will also appear in the chat box on your Zoom toolbar below. You'll need to open a web browser to watch the film using this link and the case sensitive password that's been provided. Should you have any issues, please feel free to reach out using the Q&A box also at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. Remember, there is going to be a fantastic Q&A after the film. So please make sure to make your way back to this webinar at the conclusion of your screening. So enjoy the show. Hi everybody and welcome back from that very powerful screening experience. I'm sure we're all anxious to hear more about and speak about briefly. I'd first like to introduce Anka Birkenmeyer, Professor of Spanish and Portuguese at IU Bloomington, who will moderate our Q&A this evening with Magda. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Anka. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be uh, here with you uh, this evening and to um, be able to welcome um, Maria Magdalena Campos Pons um, to the conversation, um, the amazing artist um, who envisioned the art film that we just saw. Um, Maria Magdalena, are you ready for um, our Q&A? Yes. <laughs> Hello, it is great to see you. Uh, now we see you. <laughs> fantastic. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Bikin Mayer. It's so nice to be here. And I want to say thank you to all my hosts, uh, Professor Kazma, and to Ava, all of all everybody that has been involved in making this evening possible. So thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Good. Well, um, I just wanted to start by um, thanking you for this film and for bringing the film, both the film and the documentary um, to us. It's been um, so beautiful and it's been um, immersive and healing. I think these are the, the two words that, um, that come to me. It's, um, it's a film that draws us in and that puts us into a different space from the space that we are normally in. And um, it's a very special space and you have created that for us. So thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, I wanted yeah. to um, kind of start a little bit by asking you sort of about the, the context, what, uh, what, what, um, what made you envision this film? Um, and we've heard, about the context of the of the last elections, um, of the inauguration um, of the the president and the vice president, but you, with this art film, you really shift the conversation um, 
um, and you shift it to women, to women coming together. Um, and so I just um, wanted to ask you a little bit more about this. How important was this particular historical moment for you personally? And then what made you envision this, what we saw? <laughs> well, uh, these are all a, a co complex and at the same time, very rich um, questions. Uh, I could say that maybe if you get and look a little bit on the history of my work, that the presence and the role of women have been very powerful. That is, you think in a piece so uh, spoken softly with Mama in 1998, it's a, it's a long song of celebration and homage to all the women in my family lineage. And that I maybe were thinking in the particularity of the time in which this vision of this project came to me, that a war in which women led maybe could be an interesting war to experience. Uh, I definitely was, in, was an still uh, enthusiastic and uh, with the belief that we women could be important agents of change, that the role that women could fulfill in society uh, beside the role within the family in the in the realization of the experience of from mother into sister to aunts to cousins to friends to all of that to wife uh, to also mentors uh, in the, uh, scientists and political people too that could have great influence in the well-being of society these things are more easier to say it in words than to actually completely realize and be fulfilled in life. But if we think the, the arc of the role and the space that women have occupied in our society and in our world in general, in the last, at least in the period of my life and in the period that I could think consciously and historically, it's remarkable uh, the, the importance and the way of the presence and the actions that women take and how it is changing and modifying and maybe advancing society in interesting ways. Besides that, I wanted you to be my, when I think about when we gathered and what brought me to do when we gathered, first of all, it was a dream. It's not that I get out with an agenda and say, I'm going to gather women here <laughs> and, and, and make a legend of what they could do or could not. It was really a, a gift, as I say, maybe in the in the conversation before, a gifted a gifted vision, and, and a vision that I put attention because I am thinking always dreams are premonitions are sometimes dreams are not only what is back in our subconscious, but things that maybe are the uh, ideation of what the future may hold, all of that, and I really thinking that the invitation that I propose in when we gather, that is let women in good energy, in good spirit, in good harmony and in solidarity, getting together to tell a little fragment of their personal stories. And then in the continuum of those fragment of personal story, maybe we weave together a longer, richer narrative. And that narrative could become a healing material for all our unresolved issues in society. So even when I am very happy that I made the piece, that the piece become real in the existence of the film and in the further project that we are building around the piece, what I am, what I am exciting and what I hope that happen is that as people get uh, exposed and see when we gather, they want to create their own when we gather. That from every woman that see this film, now they're going to turn and take this little invitation into, into a motivation for their own and create in whatever form. This could be a group of women drinking tea, a group of women drinking beers, a group of women uh, planting a garden, a, 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 a group of women knitting, a group of women cooking any possible way, 
any possible way that allow for a solidarity, togetherness, proximity, and proximity in which productivity of goodness, productivity of goodness come to be fostered and harvested. That is for me uh, the most important thing and how this piece, which is an invitation really, what when we gathered is a convening and an invitation to continue in a convening, continue getting together. Because if we do that, we gain a strain and we gain possibility of delivery, as I say before, delivering much needed goodness in our world, in our society, in this such fracture uh, moment in history and in biology that we are living. No, absolutely. And it's, um, I would say it's an infectious invitation, <laughs> and but in the good sense, you know, it is really, it is a film that it made me want to, to begin with, it made me want to move in space the way I witnessed women moving in space. You know, it was so beautiful. Um, but more importantly, <laughs> it is the, it's the gathering. Yes, the invitation to gather in whatever form um, that I thought is, is, is yeah, it's it's beautiful and it makes you want to gather. Indeed, um, it is it's, it's wonderful. Um, can I ask you um, a little bit about sort of the collective work that you've been doing? You've been re referring to your past work and your past work often has been sort of a, a autobiographical. You've worked with family members, um, with people that you've known. Now, this is a very particular group of women, women that you've gathered um, that we're all excited to be part of this uh, project. Can you talk a little bit more about that group of women? Um, what made you decide that you wanted to work with them? And how was the collaborative process? Well, this is, this is wonderful and it's a beautiful question. And I want to say, uh, Professor Bickenmeyer, I consider that family is not only our biological related people, that we could create families wherever we go. And in my journey through the world, this is something that I have experienced, that mm -hmm. I have blood family that are very precious and dear to me. And they have family of the journey that are equally important and fundamental for me. Every woman that is in that particular piece, and not all the ones that I wanted were there, because the circumstances and the time in which we film it. But, but in a specific, they are uh, two women that I, that I actually saw in my dream that I was with then um, when we were doing this performance because the, the field come from I am seeing a real performance that happened in the grounds uh, of the city of Washington. And the, the uh, dancer and performance artist Okuyo Pakawasili and the poet and spoken words artist, Latasha Nevada Dix. I know Latasha Nevada Dix since very early on my arrival in the United States. I was privileged in the very early 90s with another extraordinary woman who she would have been alive, had been in the circle, Jane Cortez, uh, the poet, invited me to be in a panel that she was organizing at Columbia University. And Latasha Nevada Dix delivered a beautiful, unforgettable for me uh, uh, poem. And since then, she had been part of numerous projects that I have done, and we have created a friendship for many years. Uh, I was introduced to the work of uh, Okuyo Pocahuasili most recently, but she impacted me with the same force. And a few things that were in, in, incredible, she's another Nigerian sister, which we, we share uh, the same uh, 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 soil of uh, ancestral line. And, and also, I, I have told her many times her name, Okui, which was the name of uh, another dear friend, no female male, but an incredible soul of Ni Ni Nigerian ancestry, Okui uh, Mweso, the later curator. So I, I, they become very close person in my life. And the rest of the women, uh, Jana, Samita, uh, Adele, uh, they all have been uh, introduced. Samita and, 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 and 
and Lisa were introduced to me by respectively Latasha and uh, and Okui. And Del uh, is an artist who had been working with me uh, many years before. She was also my student many years ago at the School of the Museum of Fine Art Tough. And Hannah and Jana Harper is a colleague from my current uh, position at Vanderbilt University. Uh, building community and building proximity to people is one of my most fundamental uh, desires and job. Uh, I want and I hope that I do that, that wherever I go, I manage to engage with people in a way that is uh, mutual, enriching, and, and that open as well opportunities. Uh, so every one of these women, uh, we literally got together and uh, in the creative process, in the origination of the piece, I fundamentally work first with Latasha and with Okui in the idea of a sonic element and motion. But then we have all this conversation with the rest of the, of the group. And every one of them was given totally freedom to in, reinterpret and to create with certain directions uh, they own taking in this idea of when we gather and also very much centered in ancestral lineage. So they are African-American, indigenous, uh, African from the continent, uh, mixed Latina. Uh, they, they were this spectrum uh, of almost all range of possible uh, that we could, uh, we could reach uh, in that particular moment. Uh, we were interested in to have a woman of a Indian ancestry, South Indian, because we wanted to, to celebrate this incredible event of having the very first uh, women almost, almost breaking <laughs> the, the, the glass ceiling of the, power, the political power of our country. But we know that the political power of our country is a metaphor, but political power in the world. So it was an extraordinary moment of, of excitement, celebration, and I, I wanted the piece uh, to collect um, a son of that when I have the opportunity to elaborate outside this first uh, in, 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 in immersion of my own dream, uh, which was more wild and most, uh, <laughs> I would say, metaphysic and more symbolic in a way, but then to construct it in this short, but significant zone of celebration to all the effort, the accumul accumulative effort of women's struggle and women consistent trying to really advance our position in society. Uh, that's what I wanted. A big, um, <laughs> is it is possible to say, a big embrace of intentions of dedication and labor of women's together for our role and our space in society. No one that does that um, beautifully. And that's, um, I mean, I guess what I, what I also really love about it is that, you know, you have a six minute, very intense um, art film um, <laughs> that is really carried by these women, um, by their movements, the space around them. Um, the, the beautiful poem, um, the, the poem really stayed with me. There were sort of individual lines that stayed me, with me for a long time. Um, and then the thread at the end that brings them, the, the ribbon that brings them all together. So, so it's really, it's a very intense experience. Um, but then you build on that. Um, and I was going to ask you about that with the documentary, right? Because in a way the documentary is then sort of an augmentation of what this um, art film had presented in a very concentrated form. Form. And so then in the documentary, there seems to be that's another yet another collective of women who work together exactly. to, to exactly. amplify what had been stated totally earlier, agree. much more po poetically to do this now in spoken word, right? So, so this is, you have used the, the exact word, amplification is what when we gather hope to create. If, and, and I, I mean, my, my secret ambition is that there are many, many, many circle, circles of when we gather 
around the country and around the world. That, as you say before, this a uh, little bit of infectious, this kind of a, uh, this is a good virus, no? Uh, this is, this is, that is possible. That allowed us, and I, I am thinking that, um, I am thinking that sometimes they are uh, forms of of creativity and art that happen that um, for us the maker and in this case for me the, the the maker of the originator of this project I could not even see it but I I just imagine uh, how important and how. Right now we can't hear you. The sound is away, you're, you're muted. Oh, I'm sorry, could you hear me now? now so so what I was saying is that sometimes the creative process is almost out of the hand of the creator. Uh, if we were in pandemic when we did the piece and some of the limitation of the piece, but when I, when I imagined the piece, we were not in, yet uh, in pandemic. Uh, completely, and the and the 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 question is that when I imagine the piece, I imagine the piece as a performance in the in the ground, in geography, in a site, and with a very large uh, group of women. So when we reduce that in idea of a massive presence of women together, and the kind of energy that they could generate together. Now we are trying to, to reconstruct that with this um, uh, symbolic number of seven. And the, the, when we gather together and with the production team who imagined and produced that, uh, they kind of build on and continue the first impulse that come out of when we gather. And then we have much, many more voices and experience and, and possibilities. And that's what I am thinking that is there in that idea that there is a continuum that I am sure that in every town, in every family, in every family, in every city, there is the possibility for to create an, a when we gather. And then and that is that could bring about women coming together to do uh, what I say, uh, do I say the harvested of goodness, the producing of measurement, the producing of a restorative energy that we need so badly in this moment. So what I am thinking that was anticipatory for when we gather is that urge that in such a time in which we have all collectively suffered so much and still collectively suffering so much, nobody how much adornment we could put around our life, the center, the mass, the matrix of our life at this moment is limitation, uh, restriction, uh, fear, and, 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 and really trying to overcome it and to continue living in a way that we have never seen before. So, so in some way, I think that in when we gather, it's almost like a, like a premonition of a, a, this time that is coming that is going to require require from all us to gather all that we can get together to keep going. This is what we're going to need. And I don't know. Uh, this, is, um, this is what I'm thinking that this may be the most telling. And Just wait for a moment. You're breaking off. Have you, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. I could hear you. Okay, then that's good. I see um, my video. I see my own video and my own time like a little is a slow motion. Uh, but I suppose that is it. But I but I hear you perfectly. Yeah, very good. You were a little. Um, you were speaking. Um, I heard you a little more softly, but I did hear you. So so we're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure, yeah, make sure that the microphone is not covered. Perhaps something like that. <laughs> Could you hear okay. me now? I have one last question for you before we can. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, now you're perfect. So I have one last question for you, perhaps, um, and then we can and then we can um, open uh, our Q and A um, to um, to others. But my last question was actually I'm um, just thinking about um, 
people in our audience um, and also the people that you have been teaching at, at Vanderbilt. So, so I guess my question is simply, and it's, it's probably just about summarizing what you want this film to be, right? Um, the, both your art film and the documentary. What, what message do you have for the students? Um, and that, that, that might be male or female students, right? Um, the ones that you teach at Vanderbilt or, your, or the students here at IU, what can they do in response to your work? <laughs> well, that, that is a, a, an important question too. Uh, be brave, uh, work with your fears, uh, work with your unknowns, uh, work with the difficulties and the challenge. Uh, in making, when we gather, uh, we cross the country, literary, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, to gather and to grab few image that we were thinking that could be iconic for our time. Uh, that we saw that they were necessary. Uh, feeling that something is necessary is not necessarily thinking that is going to be approved or that is going to be successful. It's actually that is needed, that you yourself are talking from your best self and from your core with something that you are out to, to say and to share. So that kind of, um, of centering and that kind of commitment to the craft and to commitment to the making is something that I require of my students and that I give in my work. Uh, as, I grow, as I get a little more, uh, let's say mature in the making and older in years, um, I am thinking that that is fundamental. Uh, I I was not sure about the impact or no of when we gathered. I was sure that the seven women that were doing this film were given their heart. And we, we were together every single time by, by, this, by this device, by Zoom, by webinars, we rehearse it, we sing it, we cry, we were happy, unhappy, we, we argue uh, through that. In, this, in, that. in that particular moment of beginning of the center of the pandemia, we didn't even let the limitation of the time stop us. We found a, another way to go around and to be productive and to tell our truth at that moment, hoping that could reach other. That is the fundamental scene of creativity. Uh, you're going to try to do your best. Uh, you're going to try to engage other. You're going to try to be true to yourself, to your call, and and you're going to give the best that you can to them to the moment that you're doing. And then you're going to learn from the scenes unfinished and the uh, the scenes that were not the way that you imagine, or all of that because all that happened. So I have been teaching now for over 34 years. Uh, uh, so this has been a lot of conversations and a lot of exchanges all the time. Every lesson, every class for me is starting anew. And, and I give myself the permission to fail and to succeed. Uh, to, the, to the students to, for whom I am a very good teacher and give them what they need, I give my best. To the students that I fail and I didn't give them what I, they were expecting or were imagining, I try my best. Uh, and then when I leave the classroom, I feel like, a, all right, that was my best today. And I learn and I try to get ready. So I am working now to what will be the next step of when we gather and how it could be uh, improved and perfected and move forward. But in that invitation that you asked me to, uh, Professor Bickenmeyer, to say what I want to say to the students, I actually want to say, uh, let, let yourself be surprised to something that you were not expected and happen and take that lesson and incorporate it uh, in, 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 into what is next. There is um, so much unknown and so much uh, 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 resolve in the journey of life, in just in the journey of life. And I don't want to sound, I don't want to try to sound 
<sighs> that I given really a lesson, but um, I lost yesterday a great supporter of my work, a great man who did extraordinary scenes, not only for artists like me, but for many people, Jerry Rappaport in the city of Boston. Mm -hmm. To him, mm. I dedicated this gathering tonight of good souls, of good thinkers, trying to make our little gift for this world to be better. And every one of us try and could succeed in the best of our capacity. The students learning and trying and trusting and believing and being brave and unconditional and committed to the truth and arguing with the professor that, like me, that coming and say, I have 30 years of doing that, and I know what I am saying, and they, they could come and say, okay, professor, but we're thinking that it's this way, and I am open to hear that. And so um, it's just a great journey of um, unexpected and just corners that we know they're coming, but when they hit us, it still surprise us with what they are that we could not see ahead. Thank you, Marta. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Magda, for those great comments. And actually, we do have an audience question that speaks to um, one of the points that you raised in your in your last answer um, to Anka, which was thinking about the next steps for this project. Now that when we gather and when we gather together, has been out in the world and circulating, and you've had time to reflect on it. We have an audience member who's interested in knowing if there's any ideas or concepts in the film that you've particularly struck on that you wanna develop further in your next project or in the next iteration of this project. Well, uh, what is interesting is that some of the idea of the film come from very previous work. For instance, the idea of the the, 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 the ribbon that link us all together, the blue line, even when I see it in my dream in both blue and, and, and saffron, uh, it is coming from a piece that I did in the early turn of the century that is called replenishing. And mm -hmm. is my mother and myself linked by a, 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 a line of African beads. Uh, uh, that piece was really the, the, the starting for that. But one of the things that is important is when we gather, uh, my hope is that one day would be a live performance stone place because the idea is that this, <laughs> this is a live performance as I imagine it. It was no a film, of course. Uh, they are scenes that I, I would keep working in, in the element of the film, but my dream is that we could perform the piece Many women could, could perform the piece, and the women taking this uh, idea of gathering, contact close, wide, moving, finding all the directions, the seven directions, uh, the cardinal points, the bottom, the top, above and below, and the center, east, west, south, north, and they could too uh, create their own uh, rituals. There is many possibilities to to do it uh, for conversation for commitment for a uh, coming together. So I, my invitation is I will be performing some way, some place when we gather in the future, may all the good energies allow me and my collaborators, but also every one of you could construct and create your own when we gather in your community, in your uh, school, in your family, in your town, uh, that's the idea. That is, a, a, I saw, I remember when I, we were talking earlier, I say, what I would like for when we gather, I want when we gather to become a movement of mm -hmm. women fighting for togetherness and again to her best good, which is so much needed. And maybe I need to elaborate one day more about this metaphor, her best in good. We need a world that is more compassionate, mm -hmm. that is kindness, that is more accessible, that is more equal, that is more just. And I am feeling that, and I am thinking uh, that we women, we women may need to let the past toward that. Uh, 
it is this too much to ask it is this a uh, 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 you know requesting too much i uh, maybe i am a little romantic but i believe that that is something that i will be ready to fight to i will be happy to fight for my own romanticism in the name of being able to to propose and to create a a more livable and and balance uh experience in our world in our time and the only way to do that is you do it where you are in the spot that you are with the people that you are i'm trying i am trying 100% every minute of my life uh since we film when we gather i have created many other gatherings of connection uh introducing possibilities for people to work to create to 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 be together for good your your thank you for that answer and your your comment about about that fight really speaks to your your earlier comment about asking students and artists to kind of sit in the in the fear, sit in the struggle when they're creating. So we can really clearly see those lines right coming through in your work. So we do have another um, question from the audience that says your film really speaks to a deeply empathetic and optimistic sense of communal family that I found very moving. How do you reconcile that with women who? aren't committed to sisterhood or mutual empowerment. Where are those women in relationship to the circle? I want to get closer to them. I want to embrace them. I want to invite them. I want one element that you cannot see in the film is that in my dream, the city that we were, that were we were performing, which was Boston, Washington city, uh, Washington DC was a smelling delicious. <laughs> it was a smell in the air. It was a perfume in the air. And I and I and I say the day that we perform when we gather, we will need to be launching when we gather Cologne. <laughs> no? But that was to this idea of a let me reach you with all the senses. Let me reach you because I could touch you. Let me reach you because we are uh, speaking. Let me reach you because we are moving. Let me reach you because we could smell together in this air. And this is interesting that again, uh, very interesting. A smell is in the air and we are immediately after mask. And we are, you know, in this uh, process of losing a, a sense of, a, of, of a smell. So uh, for the women that are out of the circle is, uh, they are the circle is 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 centrifugal. Is nobody's out. Everybody's in uh, in some way. And what I propose is, if you are in the rim or in the center, is because your journey and because your circumstances. But the intention of the spinning, the intention of the movement, see this joining with love and with sense and with intention of goodness, it should reach you. It should reach you. So uh, I yes, there is optimism in that, and optimism could should not be a a, a cheap hop of the idea that um, optimism my for me and I'm sorry I'm moving here. Optimism for me is in the making. So I am actively working for gathering women together and for gathering people together here in Nashville where I am now but also in Matanzas in Cuba, but also uh, in New York, but also any place that I could reach. And I have this incredible, and every one of you in the audience too, circle of family, friends, colleagues, people with whom sometimes we need to gather to argue, but they are not out of my realm of love. They are not. Even the one that maybe are listening to me and saying, you know, what she's talking. They are for me in my attempt to reach to love them 
And I, I say in a performance many years ago in Alabama, is you stay longer with me, you are going to love me. Well, I have to say your vision for the circle as all encompassing is really strongly felt in your passion for this project. And one of our audience members specifically said, thank you for the invitation to join the circle. And I will echo that thanks to you. Um, and we, I'll, I'll just, you know, in the interest of joining the circle, I'll throw out our last question in terms of thinking about um, where this film has gone and how far it has reached. And we do have an audience member who's interested in knowing if Vice President Harris has had an opportunity to see the film, if you know. <laughs> well, remember, I am an artist and I move all the time in the circle of art. It would not be appropriate for me to answer this question at this particular moment, but the film is going to be presented in the next, um, this coming Friday and Saturday in the Park Avenue project of Carrie Mewin in Park, um, Park Avenue Armory, New York City. So if you guys are in New York, uh, you could be seeing the film again. It will be played from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. for the two days of Carrie Mewin convening uh, in Park Armory and Park Avenue, New York. And then um, come back to our website and we will keep putting news of where the film is going. And we will know at the end who have seen and who have been, uh, but I think the most important thing is that you guys uh, tonight here are participating with the experience and, and please start your, your circles and you're gathering. And I know that we we will gather again soon, someplace in this circularity. Well, on that note, I have to thank you so much for the time, the energy, and the amazing, really thoughtful comments that you've given us here tonight. You have left us with so much to think about and such an energizing way to approach joining your circle and creating our own circles. We can't thank you enough for your time. I also do want to thank our sponsor donors, the Marsha R. Bradford and Harold A. Dooms are in a movie series. Nan, our curator from Eskenazi, Anka for being here with us. Our wonderful behind the scenes IU Cinema staff who has been producing this event from start to finish. And of course, thanks to all of you audience members out there for in watching this beautiful film, engaging in this conversation and giving us your thoughtful questions and your time this evening. I wish you all a wonderful rest of the evening. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.